Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for stopping by. iPad iOS 18 is here and some of the features took me a little while to figure out. Let's do a quick walkthrough of the new features and I'll show you how to use them. If you haven't already downloaded the update, that'll be the first step. Go to settings, then general, and under general you want to select software updates. Here you will see the update for iOS 18 at the bottom. Now this update is not going to include Apple Intelligence yet. It's scheduled to be released with iPad iOS 18.1 in October. This update is full of customization options. Let's start with the home screen. You can move your app icons anywhere on the screen now like you can widgets. And on the widgets, you'll notice that there's a tab at the bottom right, and you can use this to resize the widget to make them large, medium, or small, depending on the size set for the widget. This next part is gonna be hard to see with my black background, so I need to go into my settings and change my home screen color to a lighter color so you'll be able to see the customizations that I'm adding. While I'm doing this, I wanna let you know that everything I'm gonna show you today in this video can be applied to your iPhone. So if you are wanting to know how to do it on either device, the directions are the same for both. When you hold on the home screen and select the edit option, in the drop down menu, you will see a customization option has been added. When you select customization, you'll get this new pop-up menu at the bottom with customization options. At the top, you have the option to make your icons smaller or larger. When you make them large, it removes the app name from your home screen. The next row gives you the option to change the color of your icons. You can choose light, which is your regular icons, dark mode, automatic, which automatically changes your icon based on the time of day, and the last option is your tenant feature. The tent option will match your icons to your current wallpaper. This is also where you can change the color of your icons using the color bar. You can use the bottom bar to change the opacity of your icons. So if you want them to have a white look to them, just scroll it all the way over to the right and it'll make your icons white. There's also a color picker tool that you can use to match your icons to any color on your home screen background. And when you use the dark mode option, it makes your screen a little darker. If you wanna change that, just use the little sun icon in the top left and it'll brighten up your screen. Now let's go back to the home screen. When you long hold on an icon, now you have a few more customization options. You can lock your icons with face or touch ID, you can hide your apps here and you can also change the icon to a widget if the option is available. To change your icon to a widget in the pop-up menu, you'll notice that there are two square icons. The one with the four is for your icons and the other option is for your widget. When you select that, then you'll automatically get the widget on your home screen. And you can use this option to change it back to an icon. To lock your app, you'll need to select the required face ID option and then select required face ID again. The face ID option will pop up at the top to activate this option. And now when you get ready to open the app, you'll be required to complete the face ID process before the app will open. If you select hide and require face ID, you will get this prompt. In the prompt, when you select hide the app, you will have to complete the face ID process, confirm that this is the app that you wanna hide. It will be removed from your home screen. To access the app, you'll have to go to your app library and you will see a hidden folder. When you tap on this hidden folder, you have to provide your face ID before the apps will appear. Now to remove an app, you just long hold on it and select do not require face ID. The control center looks completely different now. The icons in here are round and there are tabs in this section. When you scroll through them, you'll see your music player, a shortcut to the home app, and the last tab is a view of all your connection settings. Going back to the main tab, you can select the plus symbol at the top left and you can move around the icons in this area. And just like on the home screen with your widgets, you can use the bottom right to resize any of your controls in this area. You can also drag the icons to start another page for your control center and then you can rearrange the icons on that page however you want as well.
At the bottom of the control center, there's an add control option. When you select this, you get a long list of options that you can add to your control center. This list can be used to customize your control center to fit your needs. When you're done customizing your control center, just tap the screen and it'll bring you back. There's another addition to the control center. At the top, there's now a power button that you can use to turn off your iPad. The Photos app got a new face, making it easier to find your photos. Your photo library is at the top of the screen, and the bottom half gives you access to all these different categories for you to choose from for your videos and photos. You have your pinned collection, and you can customize this to include any photos or albums that you want pinned here. The utilities area has a few different categories here that can be used to organize your photos, such as your hidden, recently deleted, your duplicates, and imports. You have a section for your media types that include your videos, selfies, live photos, and portraits. And there's even an area for suggested wallpapers. At the bottom, there's an option to customize and reorder, and you can use this to choose what you wanna see and how you wanna see it. So if you wanna remove something, just uncheck it. And if you wanna rearrange, just drag and drop it where you want it. Let's take a look at the calculator app. When you first open the app, you'll notice that it looks kinda of similar to what we're used to on the iPhone. The icon at the top left gives you a history of your problems that you've solved with your calculator. And the calculator icon at the bottom left gives you different options for the calculator. There's a scientific calculator for solving your long equations, and the last option is for your math notes. This is where you can write out any math problems and solve them in real time. The app will adjust the solution for any additions or corrections that you make to your math problems. The math notes option also includes a graphing option that will graph out your answer to your problems. The notes app got a few new features with this update. You can use math notes in the notes app and it will solve the equation just like it does in math notes. There's also an option to record audio in the Notes app now. Select the paper clip and record audio. The Notes app will record and then transcribe the audio when it saves. The Notes app will record all of your audio and then sync it to your Notes app and you will be able to read the transcript and listen to the recording. Now when I select the recording in the Notes app, you can read the transcript of what I recorded over the audio recording. You can also use the record option and select the caption icon at the top and the recording will just transcribe instead of recording the voice message. This option transcribes the words that you are saying but does not record your voice saying the words. There's a new highlight feature in the notes app that not only highlights the words but also changes the color of the text to the highlighter color. Just select the text and then in the lettering option beside the highlighter, you can choose the color that you want the highlighter to be. All right, I saved the best for last and now we're gonna go over Smart Script. Smart Script is the feature that came to the Notes app to improve your handwriting while keeping your handwriting, I guess in your, your own font, is that what you would call it? It keeps your handwriting in your handwriting. It just cleans up your text and makes it look better. Make sure you open the menu for your writing tools and turn on the auto refine handwriting in your menu options. That's the only way that Smart Script will work in your Notes app. Now when you write with your handwriting in the Notes app, once I finish the sentence, then you'll see that it kind of straightens out and improves my handwriting some, but it still keeps it in my handwriting. So you can tell that I wrote it, it just looks a little better than my original handwriting, which I'm still working on. Another thing I wanted to show you is like this move option. So if you put your pencil in between words or letters, you'll get like a cursor and you can take that and drag the sentence or text wherever you want it to go. And then you can start back writing. So if you need to shift a sentence down, you can use this feature to add your sentence in and keep going with your notes.
the last feature of smart script i could not get it to work i tried it several times using this marker that i'm writing with then i looked it up and it said that you should try it with the pen but i could not get the scribble function to work so if you've tried the scribble function in the notes app and you know how to use it please let me know in the comments what i'm not doing correctly if there's something that i'm missing a setting that i need to have on just drop me a comment and let me know thanks Last thing I want to look at is the Freeform app. Now you have scenes that you can use in the Freeform app that help you jump around to different sections using this endless whiteboard. So I've created a couple of scenes and I'm going to jump around and show you how it works. And to create a scene, all you do is go to a blank space on your whiteboard and I'm going to add in a few pictures of my MacBook. And when I put the pictures in, I'm going to position the three pictures how I want them make sure that that's the only thing showing on the screen you saw how I just moved it so that top area wasn't showing you want to make sure that this is the only scene or only part showing because when it jumps it's going to pull in the other areas if you have them on your screen once you have everything set the way you want it you're going to select this list icon in the middle of in the middle of the toolbar at the bottom and click add scene Okay, that's all the features I've tried out so far. Let me know in the comments if you've tried any other features or if you have any tips to share and I will gladly try them out. Also, let me know what's your favorite part of the update so far. Alright y'all, till next time.